The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Let's go, baby! Are you ready for a break? Uh, Yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on a break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. Hello, guys. Welcome to episode... 197 don't, don't something. Do it. Stop. <laughs> I'm Amber Garcia. I'll be your host for today. I'm joined by the usual cast: Nick Inman, David Hellman, uh, Derek Eagleton. He he's still a part of the show, I believe. He's gonna be back next week. Right now, he's having a full graduation party. Uh, three people in his family graduating. I believe his son is graduating from middle I school. I think he just saw on Twitter what was going on. Last week, and he was just decided kinda, to. Quit. He said, "You know what? If I'm not wanted, after what happened last week, I don't miss him. Good. Oh, cool. Well, I'm sure he'll hear that. That's okay. <laughs> well, kidding, kidding. We we Derek, do have a lot you. of <laughs> a lot of things to discuss. First of all, Tapper's injury. He suffered a concussion on Tuesday's practice. Uh, somewhat surprising to some, maybe not that surprising to others, due to the fact that he's proud." To be known yeah. to be having, you know, suffering several injuries. <laughs> Poor guy. I feel terrible. I love the guy, but he just, he doesn't get a break. I mean, concussions and OTAs. That's a new one. I mean, that's that's where, you know, when you're injury prone, I mean, that happens. And uh, you're right. I, I Honestly, I hate saying this. I always kind of forget about Tapper until he gets hurt. I mean, like when he comes back up into a headline, like I just, I just don't. You can't count on him right now. You can count on Chaz Green more than you can count on Tapper right now. That's just kind of the way I look at it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna overreact because, I mean, well, with this team, concussions can mean lengthier absences than some. True. But, uh, you know, if it's just run of the mill, I mean, that's a, that's a couple of weeks, and it's May 31st, so. But, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's an unfortunate tendency that he has displayed over the course of his career. He's only appeared in one game, I think, which was the season opener yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah he, did. he did. It's great. Yeah, uh, maybe more than that. But, you know, it's just, you know, it's it's it sucks for him, and it's kind of unfair because players don't do anything to bring injury on themselves typically. But, you know, when it, you know, the third time in three years, you're just kind of like, okay, man, cool. He, he is the classic example of a guy that will probably just, at some point, it'll run its course and they'll move on and he'll sign with, you know, Cincinnati and have like eight sacks in a season or something like that. I mean, he, he could be somebody else's George Selvey. He's clearly a talented player. Yeah. Um, and I think this is probably his last shot here. Yeah. Just, I mean, he's a fourth round pick, third year. There's nothing tying you to him significantly. Uh, and I think he needs to have a great and healthy training camp. Um, otherwise, I think they'll probably just say, "All right, let's call it what it is." So, and and this is this means nothing in terms of that. Like I said, I mean, I would expect this doesn't affect his availability for training camp at all. So it's just kind of like yeah. I said, it's I th- it's I kind of a bummer when it's I the third with, year in a row. Tapper and you know the writing was on the wall when they drafted Dorrance Armstrong, another fourth round pick that. It's like you know he's now he's got that same role that Tapper had. So That's, um, I I don't think there's there's no guarantee Tapper makes this team if he's fully healthy. Right. Like he needs to be healthy and have a great camp. Right. So and like I said, that doesn't mean he won't. But it's just an unfortunate setback, especially for a non-contact practice or a yeah, limited and, contact practice. And speaking of concussions, uh, Jason Garrett did kind of hit on the whole Rico Gathers topic and. What happened there? We were all wondering all last year, why did Gathers disappear from everywhere? You know, we didn't see him around too much. But the whole fact, it was that he suffered a concussion. And by the time that he was kind of somewhat healthy, it was at a point that the team was just too far into the season to bring in a guy like him to even give him a chance to play. And when you have Jason Wayne on the field, obviously that's a given (laughs) that nothing's going to happen there. But based on the yesterday's practice... To me, watching him this week versus last week, I did see some improvement there. He was making some good blocks and catching the ball, not really dropping it. What were y'all's observation? I mean, like, 
like we said before, he, you know, he's a guy that just stands out for obvious reasons because he's because the size is there. He he looks the part. Uh, he's still figuring out the ins and outs of, of the game. Um, but you know, I, I think I think this is a critical time for him. I think the OTAs and in mini camps are bigger for him than any other person, just because he has to show that that he he's picking things up that he can be reliable. It is not about catching the ball and, and all that. It is about making sure your quarterback does not get, you know, sacked because you missed your protection and, and all that. So it's it's every other little part of the game that's not about the athleticism. It's the mental part of it. Uh, and this is the really – these are cr- critical moments for him. Not only that, but I think Jason Garrett's willingness to admit that is kind of telling because – yeah, let's say it was Blake Jarwin who has been pl- he played college, he played tight end his whole college career. I assume he's been playing tight end since he was like, yeah. you know, 13 or 14 years old, whatever. Uh if if that were him, they would bring him back and let him he's practicing. He needs yeah, to practice. He needs to, practice. he needs to get better. He needs to uh he can play scout team and contribute and give you looks that is going to mimic what the opponent's going to do. They didn't even want to do that with Rico, which means they don't even trust him to do that. They don't trust him to give you good looks in practice and do scout team stuff and play special teams. Like I th- if, if you're not willing to bring him back and let him practice and do stuff, that means you have no confidence that he can even get a Jersey on Sunday. Um, I, I, I disagree a little bit because you had to make a decision to bring him back. You've got to either knock somebody off the roster right. or cut him and put him on the practice squad. And I don't think they felt like they could get him through, but that's, I mean, you can't knock somebody else off the, it, it kind of, you know, I mean, I don't want to give away what we're going to talk about later, but it reminds me of the Darius Jackson thing that I harped on for so long. It's like you couldn't find somebody else. Like if he was really going to be able to help you, if you had even a shred of confidence that he'd be able to help you during the course yeah. of the season, you could find somebody to get rid of. And it's and, easier to say that now too when you're when you go nine to seven and it didn't matter anyways. Yeah. It's, it's easier to go. There's a linebacker. There's a Justin Marshall Lillard or somebody who I I guess I, my point I, I know you're the you know there are a lot of fans out there who you know he he can he can do something he can be a red zone threat he's he's the goat in waiting whereas maybe they're wrong but the way they view him is they're like he's so far behind he's got so much to learn that we can't do anything with him during the six day six day grind of the season goes back to my point this is why these are so critical for him these practices. Yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and give the quick roster update. On Tuesday, the Cowboys released rookie free agents Malik Earl and Ed Shockley and signed linebacker Eric Pinkins, right? Eric Pinkins. Pinkins, yeah. Pinkins. To add a little bit of depth <laughs> there at the linebacker position. That's fun. And to yesterday, say. they released guard Jake Robertson and defensive tackle DeQuinton Osborne and signed wide receiver Mikali McKay. Hopefully, I'm saying these names Mikhail right. McKay. Yeah, there you go. Defensive tackle Antoine Woods. And your guy, Darius Jackson. Woo! Okay, now yeah. this, this brings He's back. some question. Okay, what is going to happen at the running back position? Darius this- Jackson's about to go for 1,000. That's what's about to okay, happen. Okay, so where does that leave guy. Bo Scarborough? Well, you know, Zeke may not get to play if Darius Jackson's coming If back. Darius Jack, I mean, <laughs> Zeke uh, better watch it. <laughs> what what is ya. the deal with this, with, with you? Like, I mean... What what is the where's the excitement? What makes him so from? exciting to you? To you and not the other teams okay. that haven't picked him up. <laughs> it, it it doesn't. I mean, in, in I'm not dumb. In the grand, I, I mean, he's he's a back end of the depth chart running back. Um, this is more about what the Cowboys. Well, not, no, like, it's a li- it's a little go. bit of both. He he's a, okay. For those of you who don't remember, if you're listening to this show, I'm sure you do. He's a sixth round pick of the Cow. They drafted him before they drafted Rico, the the great hype gathers. Uh, he had a great training camp. Like he played special teams. He was good in the opportunities that he got. I thought he w- he had really impressive quickness and shiftiness. And then kind of going back to my point about Rico, he was good enough that they kept him on the roster for three months despite he never got a jersey. He could not get off the inactives list, which not trying to be mean but like that's it's just kind of a waste if you just if from week to week you can't even get active once i mean you're just carrying him for basically depth purposes and for future and for the future yeah and so that says a lot when you carry a guy for 12 weeks that you don't think can help you on a game day and then uh 
you know, Darren McFadden came off of NFI and Randy Gregory came back from suspension and they cut him and I bet they thought they could get him to the practice squad and they didn't. And it was never for me about that. I thought Darius Jackson was this amazing player. I just thought the logic didn't make sense. I thought it was stupid. Um, and so clearly it worked, it worked out. I mean, the Cowboys still have a great running back. Their running back situation looks fine. And Darius, you know, he, he, I actually talked to him yesterday. He had a whole, uh, he called it a really humbling year. I mean, he wound up in Cleveland. He got hurt in Cleveland, was on IR with an ACL all last year. And then as soon as he was healthy and like excited about contributing there, you know, ah, we're good. Bye. And, uh, and then, you know, you, you get a real look at what the NFL is like when you're unemployed and maybe only two or three teams are interested in talking to you. And comes, comes back yesterday yeah. and gets the ball. <laughs> Gets one play. Yeah. Gets what? What happened no, in that play? I, I he nothing. He didn't. <laughs> they threw him. Poor guy. I mean, it, it's fine. And the first, yeah, coming back. To and, answer you know. to answer your question, it, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, yeah, yeah. Zeke is. It, you still got Zeke, and then I would, you know, Rod Smith is the number two as far as I'm concerned. But again, a lot of people were very hyped with Bo. Yeah, well, you know, coming off the draft. So what happens there with that third spot? Competition, man. And that's, you know, the the one thing that we've been saying about Bo is everybody's hyped about him because he's super talented, a known name from a big name program. But he's a seventh round pick. There's no there's no guarantee he makes this team. Uh, and Darius is a guy with experience on special teams. So competition. I mean, I'd be I would be surprised if both of those guys made the team. And so I would guess if we're being real, obviously Darius is my guy, but I would bet that they hope Bo beats him. Bo is yeah. better than him in camp. Um, I mean, it's what more can you do? And, yeah, exactly. And Scarborough should be a guy. Which, well, and I think that Darius Jackson's a great guy to compete because Darius Jackson's a guy who can do multiple things uh, and gives you a look. I mean, he's got the talent to be your third running back, but he can also he can do I kick mean, return. He can do all that type of stuff. This is also a team that that would love to play Zeke one to seven snaps in the whole preseason. You know, that's yeah. I mean, absolutely. They, they don't want him carrying the ball. Absolutely. So anybody else that can carry the ball so, and finish these games would be great. I don't think it's remotely a lock that Darius makes the team, and I. I'm not going to go as far as to say I'd be surprised, but I would I wouldn't bet money on it. I still, you know, I think Bo Scarborough is probably the guy, but quality competition in a spot where they wanted some. The other of the other moves, you know, I thought Osborne was doing some decent things and uh and Shockley was a guy that I thought had a chance to kind of, you know, be a contributor and maybe be a special teams guy. But you know, when when it's this early in the game and and they they say now what we're moving on. I mean, they obviously didn't flash at all. This is the this is the time of year when you just keep churning that roster, as Bill Parcells used to say. And you you definitely do, but I always think it's funny. Like, you know, Stephen Jones said it like two days ago. When we talked to him at a press conference. He's like, you know, it's it's shorts and jerseys. It's cool to see him move, but what can you really see? Well, if you don't think a guy has got anything, you can see that apparently because you're cutting people. Yeah, and a lot of it, as I said with Rico, a lot of it is is more than that. It's it's just they get in these meetings, they know who's picking it up and who isn't, and you know that that's a good point. Those too, aren't yeah. things that we see right now, but but they yeah. they definitely know how far along is this guy from from actually getting this thing. Yeah. Would you trust him? Like no way. Yeah, it's true. So we're in at a transition point in this Cowboys team, uh, transitioning to a youth, younger yeah. group. And we've talked about Zeke's role into becoming that kind of leader. We already know Dak Prescott has been that leader. So, Nick, you know, for Dave and I, we it feels like we're back in college. We we fit right in. But <laughs> is that right? But you. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, okay. we're pretty close. I it, I appreciate you giving me those years back. Thank you. You are on, the, yeah, we're Thank on you. that comes, side. Here now comes a Nick. dig in about three, two. Yeah, it's fine. Nick, uh -huh. you know, you're, you're in yeah. another generation. Okay. Um, kind of different day. Sure. <laughs> so Proud I'm going to direct this question to you okay. since that seemed to be a theme in yesterday's locker room. A lot of people asking everyone, you know, th this whole youth movement. How how does it feel to be in there and see all these young guys and yeah. all of a sudden not have all those veteran guys and just? I think it's interesting. Obviously, when you when you see you know 
when you've seen these guys for so many years and, and now they're no longer there. And, and who's going to fill that role? I mean, it, there's always somebody that, that fills that leadership role or, you know, fills that role of uh, I'm cranky all the time. I mean, somebody's going to do going to have, have, um, you know, the, these different roles. So, you know, for me, I, I look at it like, yeah, it's interesting, but also I remember way back in the day, like before I covered this team, the Cowboys were one of the youngest teams in the league in 1992, and, and, and they won the Super Bowl. If you're really good, it doesn't really matter. Um, Zeke can be a vocal leader if you want, but you know, pick up pick up the first down on third and two. Keep doing that, and that'll speak loudly um, with, with his actions. I, I, I think leadership is, is important, but there's obviously different ways to lead. And so somebody will fill that role. I think Sean Lee's going to do a nice job on, uh, overall. I think some guys on offense will do that. And I think it, it opens up things for a guy like Alan Hearns to say, I, I'm new, but yet I've still seen a lot more than a lot of you guys, so I can be a leader. And, and there's not this, this you know, tiptoeing around, like, who, who are you? I mean, look at the receivers. Yeah. Terrence Williams is not even out there. He can't lead right now. Bro, uh, Deontay Thompson and Tavon Austin Thompson, in there, too. Austin, Hearns. I mean, they've seen more all than the, the guys that have been here. All the new guys have more experience than the Gallo. so-called. And – it, Cole Beasley needs to, you know, he's the one guy that can that can kind yeah. of step up and do that. And I yeah. know we're going to talk about him in some other ways, but you know, I think Cole's a guy that that's been around and will understand this offense more yeah. than anybody. Now we've been wondering who's going to be that guy that turns into Des Bryant as far as being vocal and you know, hyping everyone up around him. So yesterday I heard something pretty interesting. I don't know if either of you heard this, but I'm going to make you guess right now. Who is that guy? Not on offense, just in the team. Who is that vocal guy that kind of talks trash and... Dave, do it. Who is it? Hey. Oh, she said not on offense. Oh. Not on offense. Sorry, sorry. But, yeah, I mean... (laughs) But that... We can get into that. That's the Zeke? I I mean, (laughs) I would guess... I love that that's Zeke's impression. Hey. Hey. (laughs) Yeah. Who would Uh, be your guess? I would guess Jordan Lewis. Mm. No. I think so. You know, uh, not not trash talking on the um, D line. That that D line all or nothing segment left an impression on me. Well, I don't know. Maybe I need to really watch that. Um, okay, Taco Crawford. Charlton. Uh, really? Taco Charlton. I never, I never so would have it, said it, that. This, wa- this is why it was hilarious to me. You have me. to talk. You have so, to. So apparently, that, apparently he was. He called himself the biggest trash talker. On, okay. On there. So apparently, and then the media went up to Crawford and asked Crawford about this, and Crawford, of course, just laughed. He's like, "Well, yeah, he trash, he talks trash all the time, mostly to himself. Like he's yeah, just speaking out loud. No one really pays attention to him. He was saying that he also talks trash to D Law. So okay. it was pretty Here, okay. Taco, unexpected. Okay. Taco. Here, here's the uh, here's what I want to see uh, when we're at training camp. And those one-on-one drills are going on, and it's tacos lining up against Tyron Smith or Lyle Collins, whatever. And then, and then keep talking trash. Like do do something worthy enough for you can continue to talk trash. If if that happens, then I think we'll be a will be impressed, or B will be like, what's wrong with Tyron? It's the back. It must be something. What's going on? Because Taco just beat him. But if he continues to do that, I think that's worthy of it. But I've never seen a, in, in any sport. And a grade A trash talker that was like a reserve, like a backup. Well, maybe he won't be a reserve unless That's it's that the hate that player for the Lakers. <laughs> the hate. I just thought Who's it was the guy that for but... the Lakers. You probably are not the Lakers. He used to play for the Lakers. He plays for Golden State now. Swaggy P. What's his name? Nick Young. Nick Young. He's the best. He's a trash talker who gets like six minutes a game. He might get a lot of minutes in this series. He's gonna get a ring is what he's gonna get. Well, uh, Crawford did mention that he did. He has seen a lot of growth. In that's Taco um, Charlton. Okay. So, Let me, is this just the show where I ride for my guys? Is that what I have to do? Because I ahead. like Taco too. Go I like Taco Nobody too. Likes we, taco I me. like him. I think he's going like to be a good player. But I don't think I didn't know we we were like jumped up to trash talking status. See, I thought but, we were just like, hey, he might surprise some people. I didn't think we're already I at see that it, level. I see Swaggy it as, <laughs> I see it as the opposite of that because good man, like uh, look the part, be the part type of deal. You're a first round pick. You're in your second year. You're not a newbie anymore. You should know the scheme. You're comfortable with your teammates and your coaches. Uh, they need him to take – I mean, they don't need him to be D-Law, but they need him to take a step forward. I think we had a question about this in our mailbag the other day. I said, you know, 
he played 37% of the snaps last year. He looked like he played better down the second half of the season, but he still, I mean, he wasn't what you want your first round pick to be. Um, if he can bump that even to just like 50% and then hopefully the bump in snaps corresponds to better play. I mean, you're talking, you know, if he could even get to like six or seven sacks instead of three, I think that would be huge. And I, I think confidence was a big thing for him last year too. I don't, I don't necessarily know that he had it, at least the, what you would want from your first round pick. So if he's got the confidence to be trash talking the starters and the established guys on the team, I think that's great. Don't don't be it gets humble. the energy You're, up. Yeah, maybe, get the yeah. energy up. Well, I heard you say pick. trash talking with the D line, but I mean, I still haven't seen him trash talk with the O line. Yeah, I don't. Well, well I, let's wait until training camp and see, see. How, how that but goes. But let's go ahead and take our first break. When we come back, we're gonna answer this question: Is being fat really the reason why David Irving is not practicing? I don't know. Let's find out when we come back. It can be hard to find the right resource for learning about important financial matters. You search how to build savings, you end up reading about the one weird ingredient from supermarkets that can make you taller. That's why Bank of America built BetterMoneyHabits.com, a safe little corner of the internet for answering your financial questions. Full of simple videos and tips, Better Money Habits can show you how to make the most of your money without resorting to random searches that always seem to lead to unbelievable photos of childhood stars grown up. To learn more, visit BetterMoneyHabits.com. What does it mean to be a Dallas Cowboys fan? It means you've got the passion and the heart to do your part supporting the boys no matter what. That's why when the game's on the line, you're on your feet, whether you're at home or in the stands. Actually, you're more than a fan. You are a member of Cowboys Nation, and so is AT&T, doing their part to keep you connected to America's team all season long. AT&T is a proud member of Cowboys Nation. Oh, I am craving a Dr. Pepper. I got some soda. I asked not for soda. I asked for ice-cold, craveable Dr. Pepper. Its flavor is more one-of-a-kind than a foretold sloth with a thirst for speed. <laughs> so stop settling for soda and start demanding Dr. Pepper. I love sloths. When you crave a Dr. Pepper, nothing else will do. Grab an ice-cold 20-ounce Dr. Pepper today. Dr. Pepper, the one you crave. To work this big land, you need equipment with values rooted as deep in Texas soil as you are. Like John Deere compact tractors with a six-year powertrain warranty and big features that help you work less so you have more time to do what you love. John Deere was first in the Texas fields and we're proud to be on the field as the official ag and turf equipment of the Dallas Cowboys. Find Texas size deals at myjohndeerdealer.com slash football. Terms, conditions, exclusions, and warranty limitations apply. See dealer for details. Family back to the break all right guys we are back now let's go over the guys that didn't practice yesterday we had sean lee demarcus lawrence out veteran day just nothing out of the uh you know ordinary it's fine all good taron smith he just did some conditioning it wasn't really anything injury related he was just out then we had a few other guys that's why taco's getting out Excited. Hyped up. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so Zach Martin, you know, still dealing with the whole contract thing. We have Lewis Neal, uh, Terrence Williams, Malik Collins, Coney Ealy. They're out recovering injury. Now David Irvin is still a big question mark. We know that the whole reasoning as to why he's not practicing out there on the field right now is supposedly because he's a little overweight, out of condition, and – to me, that just doesn't really add up because if you have a guy like that, why not have him out there on the field sweating in this 100-degree weather, you know, playing, uh, running around with everyone, not inside of the gym, air condition, just working out on his You're own. You're kind of like the old – you're old school. Like I'm you want to do two-a-days in Wichita Falls, <laughs> like just burn week. that fat off. <laughs> hey, it helps. Like, it absolutely and, and, and oh, he's, again, he's doing he's, things. It's not like he them. showed up here rolling. So, I mean, wow. he, he didn't. No, I know, but just like that's just a vivid, he, vivid image. David Irving, to me, was a guy that they, they love the position flex guys, and they love that about Irving, that he could play defensive end, he could play defensive tackle, he can do both. If somebody gets hurt, he's a good guy that can move things around. And I think when he showed up here, he looked a lot like a defensive tackle. So – uh, and not really an end. And I think the, we've seen before, guys go out there and they're not really ready to play. 
um, that's where you, you're going to get some injuries too. So he's doing some conditioning. He, yeah. He's getting into that point. And, and this is the point of the year. Look at all those guys you just named. I mean, if you had a, a fingernail out of place, you're probably going to get held out here. So I think they're looking for reasons to, to make sure you don't have to be forced out there if you're not 100%. You have to be 100%, I think, to, to practice right now. Yeah, that's – I mean, you're old school, but this is the new school. It's not – and I know, like, there's plenty of people that think it's terrible the way, like, players get coddled. But you go out there if you haven't. And Irving's been, like, in and out of here. Like, he hasn't been here every day. He comes every now and then. So yeah. uh, if, if he's not 100% ready, again, it's May. Why do you throw him out there and risk that he does a real injury to himself? Where, you know, right now, as far as I know, he's healthy and just maybe not in great condition. I'd rather that than he – pull a hammy or do something worse because he's not ready and to be a lot of this in an NFL practice. A lot of this could be on him because this is a big year for him. This is a contract year uh, getting hurt. I will say, I mean, we, we talked about this on, on our mailbag today too. I mean, he's in a contract year on a one year deal and has a chance to make a lot of money next year. It is surprising to me that he's not in shape. I mean, it seems like you would want to kind of not give anybody a reason to be annoyed with you this year. And that was the point I was going to make. Sorry, I didn't mean to take it from you. It's okay. It was like I a, love Irving though. It was I, like it a just, pick and roll, like you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, he. If you saw pictures of him when he got here, it was kind of shocking. But at the same time, it's like these guys are big, anyways. It's not like he's obese. You know, he he's good. He's fine. I just want to see him out there. Right now, he's too fat. Uh, there you go. I just, okay. I mean, <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> Good old Bill. We'll no, I, I, I do think Dave's right. I think that he, he'll get himself ready to go. And also, voluntary. 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 I know, you know, people don't want to hear that, but it is. Uh, if, if this is an issue, if he can't practice in July, I'll have a much stronger take than I do right now. But otherwise, I'm just like, yeah, okay. Okay, well, let's just hope that's the reason there is nothing, like, hidden behind the curtains, you know, as far as off-field issues that could impl- or affect him in other ways that we don't know yet. But in the meantime, we'll see what happens there. As far as the OTA yesterday, we saw Beasley playing on the outside. So Cole Beasley has been playing a major role, and as you guys mentioned, it, he kind of has to because who else is left as far as the veteran guys and all that. So what were your first impressions of, you know, being moving him out of the slot and playing him on the outside? I'm going to let Dave answer this because I, I don't think it matters much at all. You might have a different opinion, but I I don't, I don't think it matters in the sense that I don't think Cole Beasley is going to be this team's ex in 2018. But what it says to me is, and I think I said the same thing last week. I'm just, uh, I'm super encouraged by just all the different looks that they're throwing out there because, again, I mean, you don't have Des Bryant. You don't have Jason Witten. Those are two guys that always lined up in the same spot every time for the last decade. You don't have that. And so I think the way you compensate for that is to just make this offense as multiple as possible. And that Cole Beasley's not going to be running goes from the outside. He's just not. That's dumb. And, and he needs to do it a couple of times or nobody's ever going to care if he's well, out there. I mean, you, you can run you can run routes that benefit Cole Beasley from the outside. I mean, he doesn't I mean, yeah. you can I you can do all you can do a lot of the same stuff, not everything, but you can do a lot of the same stuff and it just again, get as many guys who can play in as many different spots as possible. I think that makes things hard on the defense. I think that is the strength of Dak Prescott. I should know this number exactly. At the, the width of the field, 53 yards. 53 yards. 53 yards. They, they got to use every bit of that. I think that's really what Dak friendly is to me. 53 yards wide. Use it. Use the field that way. They're not going to be a, a lot. They don't have a lot of vertical threats. They don't have a quarterback that they feel like it, that's his strength. So when Beasley lines up on the outside, I saw a play yesterday where he lined up out there and Tavon Austin was in the slot and they ba- basically did a scissors route, if you will. And and you know it was Austin sneaking out the to the other side. I think moving him out there just gives him more space to kind of work that middle a little bit. Um, so I, I they're gonna they're gonna use these players. You're gonna see a lot of you know jet 
sweeps and all that stuff. I just think we're going to see more with that here, and which I think is a good thing when you have a great offensive line and a running back that can just spread everything out and then let them run. I think that I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it. Dak friendly means five or maybe six different possible targets on any given play. The defense can't account for all of them adequately. And the guy who has the best matchup gets the ball and the other five guys shut the hell up and don't care. There should be one guy on this team that you go into a game and say, we've got to get the ball to him. The rest, it should kind of flow. Yeah. And that hasn't been the case all the time. Exactly. Zeke is the only person on this team that mandates a certain amount of touches in a game. Yeah. And everything else is just gravy. Until... that until changes. somebody until Gallup himself. makes yeah. some plays and you're yeah. like, okay, we got to get him the ball more. Or but something even like that. And, but even still, I think a big part of that equation is, let, okay, let's just imagine that Michael Gallup blows up two weeks in a row. If the game plan's not there for him the next week and he has a bad game, that's fine too. And he's a rookie third round pick and he's not going to fuss about it. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big part of that. I think that's a big part of being Dak friendly is he doesn't have to stress that Ooh, somebody's going to be in his ear that they're in cover one. Or cover two or what, you know, I think that's important. Well, it's still early to know and figure this out, especially when they have so many wide receivers rotating around. But as of right now, we are into second week of OTAs. Who has been that guy in the wide receiver position that has stood out to you at the moment? Um, From the whole group, who would be? Probably Deontay Thompson. He looks good. It's not even that he looks good. It's that. You know, and this and this is just me speaking from my own perspective. Um, you know, when they sign, it's like a vet deal. He's a journeyman receiver. It's not. It was not a, anything that got anybody super excited. It's just like, okay, this guy can maybe do what Bryce Butler did. It's a little bit of insurance if they don't get what they want in the draft. You don't have to keep him. You, and and they still don't. I mean, he. There's no guarantee he makes the team. But judging on what he's been doing these first two weeks. He certainly looks like a guy who's going to make the team. I mean, you know, you think about Tavon Austin. Deontay Thompson's been doing a lot of stuff like that, too. I mean, jet sweeps, screen stuff, down the field stuff, running with the first team, playing all over the formation. And I know it's OTAs, and I know one of your top receivers is hurt right now, but uh, he's just very involved and looks very competent at what he's doing. I can see, and we did a ranking the other day at the top uh, on our on our site, top 10 receivers on the team, and it's early, and I'm sure we'll do that again, we get closer to camp or in camp. But I, I think that there's, I think Thompson seems like he would be a guy that would be safe, and there might be a, a spot for one more player on the outside looking in, like, uh, and I, I would put Noah Brown in there, I'd put Lance Lenore, um, who am I missing here? That's guys that are kind of right there on that verge. Maybe Katie Cannon. I was say Cannon. But but um, two of them, if if they can if they can, you know, surpass Deontay Thompson, which seems like that would be kind of tough to do at this point. But it's still it, it's early. I mean, we. I did. I guess. Start. I sort of in my head was thinking as Deontay Thompson on the outside looking in when you know heading into the. Okay. Cedric Wilson's another guy yeah. that, that can factor into that mix. I view him more as a guy on the inside looking out now. Hey, Cedric Wilson? No, no, no. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Deontay, Deontay Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. yeah. And now you mentioned uh, Tavon Austin, another guy that, you know, there are still question marks around his name. How are the, guy, the Cowboys going to utilize him? We did see Cole Beasley returning punts, and that is something that we thought that would be one of his main jobs mm-hmm. to put Tavon Austin there. But as of right now, We've only seen him with the wide receivers just on offense doing things. So what is how can the Cowboys take him and put him and utilize him? And we know the Cowboys like him. We know that the Cowboys want him here, and he's a good player, has some speed to him. But what would be that role for him? I think he will return punts. Um, I, I think right now, looking at these drills, they want the guy back there, catch the ball, and 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 be solid. And Beasley can do that. But I think when they need to get more dynamic, I think Austin will be there. And, and also, when you're looking at touches in a game, I think it'll make more sense to put Austin there. He's not going to get a ton of touches uh, on offense. He'll get some, but it, it'll it won't be enough where he can't do punt return stuff. Um, I think he will be that guy. And 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 I think he's a wide receiver all the way. I, I until it's third and two, and he gets the ball up the middle then I, he's going to be a wide receiver for me. And I don't know if – I mean, they, they can call him whatever they want, but I think – and he calls himself a playmaker, which he is does. fine. They need more of those. I'm straight up annoyed by what 
Tavon Austin has done during OTAs or a better term for what he hasn't, hasn't done. Been. Uh, and I, I assume he's healthy. Like he's out there. Um, I mean, he does, he does stuff. I'm not saying he doesn't do anything, but like he's, he's not really featured with the first team very much. You, I, I haven't been able to get a good look at him and I hope it's not out of some like, you know, NFL sense of paranoia that they can't show their hand, you know, cause it's, it's OTAs and we get to watch two hours a week. Like, and he's got five other years worth of tape. He's been in the NFL for a long time. Like you're not hiding him from anybody. And so I kind of wonder if they are, I kind of wonder if they just don't want to show people what they might do with him. And that's just the, that's the peak of lame NFL. Like everything's got to be a state secret. Like, I can go pull up five years worth of tape on the guy. Like you're not going to show me something that I already couldn't have guessed he could do. Yeah. I mean, he, and we know he's going to have the ball and he's going to be going and, you know, on the outside sweeps and stuff like that. Um, hey, do you think, I mean, do you think that's fair compared to like the other veteran receivers? It doesn't seem like he's getting as many looks right now. Yeah. In I mean, the one day a week that we get to go. What, what we know out of Garrett and, and, and Linehan, I think you're exactly right. Yeah. I think that they, they don't want it to show all that right now. What about the, in the past, other teams having trouble finding a good spot for him? I mean, does that play into this to where maybe the Cowboys aren't just quite sure how or, you know, what to do see, with him? I see this a lot in the NBA, and it happens some in the NFL too. You get drafted – uh, because of the things you they think you can do, and you get drafted high, and you doesn't fit. But because you were drafted high and you're making a lot of money, they keep doing that. They keep pushing you here, and the expectations are high, and you're never going to get there, and you're just a bust. You go to another team, less money, a little bit different scenario, and, and you can actually fit their role. I mean, I, I think of a guy like Leonard Davis way back in the day. He was number two overall pick, had to play tackle because you don't draft a guard that high. He wasn't good like that. Goes to the Cowboys, plays guard. It, it's better. I think Austin, fresh start for him, not as much expectations to carry this offense, carry this team, be a good role player. You're making a million dollars. He Get the ball in his hands, but it doesn't have to be every time. I, I think it'll be better for him. Last week we got him, we talked to him about just, you know, like, oh, this offense doesn't have a number one receiver. Does that bother you? And he Who was like, talks like that. I, <laughs> that was my douchey TV reporter voice. Not any one specific, just generic. Um, Sounded like somebody specific. I wasn't. Um, no, but he. I mean, he was like, he's like, honestly, the pressure to be that number one receiver can be overwhelming. I mean, j- he was drafted two spots lower than where Julio Jones was drafted. I mean, just to give you an idea of what you're expecting from a receiver, you draft that high. You know what I mean? Yeah. And clearly did not produce that. And so, I, yeah, I think he's happy to be here where, I mean, if he has a game where he gets 10 touches, that would be awesome. But nobody's expecting him to produce at that level, um, not for the price they paid for him. Uh, but, no, I think I think they know exactly what they want to do with him. But – they just don't feel like showing us right now, which whatever. Okay, well, a good indicator is that we do know that he's wanted by the Cowboys. He he. Oh yeah, no. The, they want him here, and he's Scott Linehan. Guy. Scott Linehan told me last week, like you know, the same. I'll use the same voice. Like, well, is he a running back or a receiver? And he's like, he classify him as a tight end if you want to. Just get him on the team. So if the offensive coordinator is saying that, I think that means they feel pretty good about him in terms of wanting him here and having a good idea of what he can do. I, I love that. Like he told me last week, whoa, whoa, whoa. so that means that was you <laughs> that time. You're right. I, I did ask that question, and I didn't do it in that voice. You so. should, though. That would be cool. Scott. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take our final break. When we come back, we're going to discuss the whole safety position and get into all of that in depth. Cowboys fans know that the second best of anything simply won't cut it, and your skincare should be no different. A longtime locker room favorite of the players and the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas based Jack Black, is the number one best selling men's skincare brand in the country because we make products that help guys look, smell, and feel better. Visit getjackblack.com slash cowboys to get $10 off your first order of $50 or more. Jack Black, look good, smell good, feel good. Official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel Will McClay and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broaddus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at Stetson.com slash cowboys. What does it mean to be a Dallas Cowboys fan? It means you've got the passion and the heart to do your part supporting the boys no matter what. That's why when the game's on the line, you're on your feet, whether you're at home or in the stands. Actually, you're more than a fan. You are a member of Cowboys Nation, and so is AT&T, doing their part to keep you connected to America's team all season long. AT&T is a proud member of Cowboys Nation. Back to the break. Welcome back to the break. This is the third segment of the show. Uh, right now in Texas, it's pretty hot weather. Really hot, I would say. So if you're a guy, you ne- definitely need some breathing down there, some venting material that helps you. So, Nick, True. tell me all Good about point. it. How do you fix that issue? Well, I think you fix it by going to TommyJohn.com. That's really how, how you do it. I mean, we've talked so many times about how good it feels, how good it looks. You don't even you don't there, don't need to adjust anything, but there's one more part of it too that I think gets overlooked a lot, and that's just being able to wear your, your colors with your with your underwear. I mean, you can put the your Cowboy Star on the Tommy John, customize your Tommy Johns with the team of choice. So TommyJohn.com forward slash Cowboys, you get twenty percent off your first order. You can also, like I said, wear the star with pride. So. Put the star on your star, TommyJohn.com. Does it feel good when you're watching practice? I <laughs> was out there for two hours yesterday in the 95-degree heat. I was very uncomfortable in a lot of different ways, but not <laughs> okay. not with my underwear because I was wearing Tommy John. Thank you, Amber. Nice. Good to know. You know, we just like you guys being comfortable. So if you want to be comfortable, Tommy John. So let's move on to... <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the safety position. Nick, you had a chance to... I thought we were just talking about that. Okay. You had a chance to talk to Jeff Heath yesterday. And the Cowboys still haven't done added anybody new, obviously, because otherwise this would be everywhere on the internet. But they haven't added a veteran guy to come in and help in the safety position. And as of right now, they seem to be comfortable with the guys that they have, especially... Xavier Woods. Yeah, and I talked to Jeff uh, just yesterday, and he was saying that you know he he is the veteran in the guy in the room, and he could remember his first OTA, and it's kind of weird that now everyone kind of looks at him. But I asked him point blank, "Do you feel like the starting safety next to you is on the roster?" And he said, "I do." Not only did he say that, he gave the name. He he said Xavier Woods is, is you know has the right attitude. He's very versatile. He can do a lot of things with him. He really likes the the kind of. Uh, um, things that he's seeing from him. So, you know, I know Dave's probably going to say, well, what else What else would Jeff Heath say? And, and I get yeah. it, but he said that, He and, and he, he mentioned uh, Xavier Woods. So as, as they stand right now, and, and I talked to some other people afterwards because I didn't want to make Jeff look like he was calling the shots here. They, I talked to some, some other people, and they said right now there's nothing on the horizon for that. I still think they will sign somebody, but as of right now, I, it's – it's Xavier Woods' job to lose right now. But based on the things that we've watched so far, and you know we've all been very vocal on the need of a safety here, Dave. I mean, do you feel from what you've seen has your opinion changed any? No, I mean, and it's the it's the same thing I always say. Like, I'm not trying to hate on Xavier Woods. I just I think it's strange. Again, I mean, we talked about it at the top of the show. They brought in a guy to compete with Bo Scarborough and up the level of competition at the bottom of the running back depth chart. At the top of the safety depth chart, 
That is not happening. I, I mean, it's Xavier Woods' job to lose to a surprising degree. Not that he's not capable of it, just that typically NFL teams want to make their players earn those types of roles. And I don't know that there's a guy on the roster that can really compete with Xavier Woods between experience, between talent, uh, and just the numbers. I mean, Kayvon Frazier, uh, he's actually he's had some moments out there, but he's more of a box guy. He, do, he doesn't fill that role for them. And then you got some rookies and Jameel Showers. Uh, there's just there's not a true competitor for that spot. So the, the thing that that concerns me about the evaluation of safety is that when you when you're looking at in a game, what what are the positions that are really going to test the safety? Tight end, and we've seen it on this team a lot, and also speed receivers and guys that can make plays down the field. We've just said it earlier. The Cowboys really don't have that dynamic playmaking threat down the field at receiver. They don't have a tight end that's played more than a few games on this roster. So as we look at OTAs and minicamp, who's going to really expose Xavier Woods? Who's going to make them look like, oh, my God, we need some help there? I mean, I don't know if it's really going to happen. So these guys could play well in the summer, and we could be like, oh, everything's looking yeah. good. But really, until you get to some of these games and go, you know what? Maybe maybe it's not so great. That's the one thing I kind of uh, – I'm kind of worried about about seeing how it goes. You may not get a good test of how it's really going. And I I forgot somebody too. I did uh, Mark Weston Huff. I think he's he's playing second team safety. But again, I mean, that's not a name that just inspires a ton of confidence in me. And yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, again, all credit in the world to Xavier Woods. And I like Jeff Heath a lot as a player and a person too. But that's what people always say at this time of year. Yeah. Like he's he's picking it up. He's getting it. He looks great out there. He looks confident. And then, you know, we'll see what happens when we're really evaluating these guys in real practices and real football games. And the thing that worries me is if Xavier Woods is not up to it, then you've left yourself in a situation where you don't have anybody else. Right. And so, no, I don't feel differently at all. And I think they will add a safety I think they will add a safety before we go to training camp or while we're at training camp. I don't know if that guy will take the starting job. I don't yeah. know. I mean, yeah. Xavier Woods might beat him at the end of the day, but I still think they need a guy to push him. And that's what I was going to ask is, like, you guys have been here a long time, so you know how the Cowboys think kind of, you know, what their mentality is. Is this something that you really, you know, expect them to actually get someone, although they – been saying they're okay right now yeah and and i've said it before i, I think that w what you need to get at, at that position is somebody that's played a lot that can give you some leadership back there and the longer they wait the the less chance that that person's going to have to come in and really take these guys under their wing because they're going to be the new guy trying to learn it unless it's somebody who has played in chris richard's system that would that would help if, if we got to get in just we got to get in one a week we have like a quota you know i was i was just thinking how and you would love it dave how awesome would it be if if we lived in a world where the guys really talked the you know the other way hey jeff do you really feel like the safety the starting safety's here on this team i don't think so i mean i, I know we have a guy in there right now but i don't think so i think we've got to get somebody else i could see i don't know exactly who it'll be it might be that guy over here or this guy but um yeah, I mean Xavier's doing a pretty good job. We gotta get better. Like, can you imagine? Like, if, if yeah, was... I I would love it. I I was thinking about that. You know, obviously the NBA Finals are about to start. NBA's been the big storyline for the last couple months. Like Draymond Green, everybody's Draymond. Green. I just love just I just love how forthcoming that league is in general. You know, like you got Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons like sniping at each other about who should win Rookie of the Year and subtweeting each other and calling each other out and they're i mean they play 82 games in the playoffs last three months i did it's just a different if, culture like nfl players your contract's not guaranteed and the whole dynamic of the league is all about like do your job and it just it makes for it's kind of lame sometimes if jalen smith would have had an awesome year last year just led the league in, in tackles whatever could he have won Rookie of the Year? I don't know if he could have, but he should have been eligible. I mean, that's that's the question. Yeah, it's here. The, that's the it's NBA the ben question. Simmons what's thing. going on here? And, and if, I, if I don't Jaylen, think he was even listed as a rookie, he's like a one. Yeah, I w I mean, if you don't play a single game, I mean, if you don't get a single minute of action, I think you're still a rookie. Even I know you have an extra year in the weight room and all that, but I don't have a problem with that. Well, speaking of Jalen, let's go. Have, I know a lot of fans keep asking about him and his. Mm -hmm. 
uh, leg and he is playing without the brace. So that's a positive thing. Now we've seen him, you know, on the field, moving around. What are some of the things? And we talked about it last week, but people keep asking for quick updates on him. What would be your newest update on Jalen Smith? Uh, he well, did talk uh, yesterday to the media, but it, again, it's like basic stuff that I'm they happy. Say all I'm the time. happy to have some genuine confirmation about his brace because, like, I love Jalen Smith to death, but he's a frustrating person to cover because you can't always take his updates at his word. You know, I mean, he's such a positive guy. We've talked about it a million times. Like, if you'd asked him during his real rookie training camp back in 2016, if he thought he, he's like, yeah, I'm going to play the season opener. And then it be, it's like Jalen Smith says he's going to play the season opener. And then it's a story and it's yeah. not true. And like that has just been a repetitive cycle with Jalen where he is super optimistic and the real story is usually somewhere else. Uh, so I don't always trust that what I'm hearing about him is genuine. But at this point, based on what you've seen, but well, I mean, yeah. you, we've seen it with our own eyes. He's he's, he's not wearing. Yeah. I mean, he's not wearing it. He's said he's not wearing it. His coaches have said he's not wearing it. They've talked about you know how fluid and confident he looks. Jason Garrett uh, had a good quote yesterday about how you know he. You always hear that he looks like he's not thinking about it, which that's a thing for a guy coming off an injury is you don't necessarily trust that the injured body part is going to be there for you the way that you need it to be. And I think he looks more confident that he can count on it. And so, yeah, I think that's big. Um, he plays a position that is also pretty hard to evaluate in OTAs. I mean, if you can't make real contact with people, I don't know how to evaluate you. But I feel I feel super optimistic that, uh, you know, I'm not saying he's going to be an all pro, but I mean, I just like the way his arrow is moving right now. It's going to be interesting to watch how his instincts develop because that's one of the things that, to my, in my opinion, he, he needs to still work on, which also affects his footwork because if you take off one side and then now you have to switch and we know his lateral movement is something that he's had the most trouble with. So, you know, it's, uh, it's like a, a left tackle who's not, He's not the best, at, at, you know, at, at, as a blocker. He's got to almost jump off sides a little bit just to get that extra edge. And I think that's what happened a lot of times with Jalen Smith is that he had to guess. I mean, he, he, you have to, to – and sometimes when you guess right, you look great and you're swiping all over the field and it's, it looks good. But sometimes you have to guess to get that extra edge and, and, you, and you miss. And I think that you'll see less of that and see more of just the reacting instinct because he's able to cut and move like that. So – um, that's, it's, it's going to be interesting to, to see how this goes when we get a little bit more physical practices, games and stuff like that. I'm excited about what Leighton Van Der Esch could mean for him because I just, I think he'll be better if he doesn't have to play a hundred percent of the snaps and do everything that your middle linebacker is supposed to do. And I can hear the counter argument like, well, you drafted in 34th overall, he should be able to do that stuff. Okay, but this is the reality of the situation. We're two years in, and if I told you that he's a much better player playing 65% of the snaps as opposed to 100, I'll take that, especially if I can use his natural athleticism to do stuff like rush the passer. I just think having Leighton Vander Esch there to help play Mike opens him up to just be like a Swiss Army knife type of player yeah. who can do a lot of different stuff. Okay, let's That's exciting. Sorry, Dave. No, um, I was going to move into the whole quarterback position, and a lot of people, we know how this goes. Either you like Dak or you hate him or you're ready to move on from him. Clearly, he's going to be your starting quarterback next um, this season. Right. So get over it. He's your guy. He's who we have. And for 10 more seasons after that. Probably. Well, we'll see how this one goes. I'm just being, <laughs> I'm just being a jerk. <laughs> But a lot of hype around Mike White. He's been looking pretty good out there. Now there are questions in regards to him and what his future may be. And Cooper Rush, who becomes now your second guy behind Dak Prescott. So based on what you guys have seen so far, what are y'all's thoughts on those two guys? I uh, I think Mike White throws a, a little bit a better ball. Um, I think he's got a better arm. And so in practice, you're going to see that more. Um Cooper Rush, though he, when the games, you know, when the lights went on, he he moved the ball. He moved the offense. It didn't always look great, 
but he got from point A to point B and down in the end zone every time. And uh, and a lot of times he did it, and I think every time he did it in, in the preseason, they were trailing in the first half. So he has this little moxie about him that's hard to to uh, to really describe. It's a lot like what Dak had to a higher level the year before. So I it, it's early right now. I think it, in practice, one guy's going to look better than the other. But I can promise you this, if, if, if Mike White is leading this team to two field goals in seven possessions in the preseason and Cooper Rush has got four possessions and two touchdowns, we're going to be thinking differently about it. Or it's kind of the way, thinking the way Dave is thinking maybe right yeah. now. No, you kind of, <laughs> you you made my point for me. And, and not to be perfectly honest, like Cooper Rush hasn't looked great in these two practices that we've seen. But I just, yeah, he's a gamer. He looked amazing last preseason. He got a little, very small amount of regular season experience against San Francisco, which is still something. Um and I just I, – I would be surprised if two years in a row the backup quarterback for this team is a rookie who's never played. Like, I think when push comes to shove, Rush will have a good enough preseason and they will value that experience enough that I, I expect him to be the backup. Um, the thing about Rush that people forget about too is just he, his athleticism is, is underrated to me. I mean, he can make – he's not exactly like Dak on these, on these read options, but – he made some plays with his feet last year, and I think that's something that if he had to play, you can see that you wouldn't have that much of a drop-off. You're going to have some, but not that much. Okay, here's a question from Twitter. Are there any chances of adding a veteran as far as the defensive tackle position that would be someone consider splashy? Uh, flashy? Splashy. Splashy. Flashy. Think, other than wide receiver flashy. and <laughs> – Richard Ashey? Yeah, I mean, that's... We already got Richard Ashey. Um, other, uh, wide receiver and safety are, like, the only positions left in the NFL where there are, quote-unquote, splashy players left. I mean, Jonathan Hankins is out there. The Cowboys don't want him. Um, other than that, I don't even know. I think if somebody else gets hurt or something else happens, yeah, I would expect them to. Yeah. Um, Rod but, Marinelli and splashy defensive linemen are, yeah. just don't work. I mean, he doesn't want that guy. He, he doesn't want him out. There. He hasn't typically. And I mean, you know, he, and yeah, he's he's got guys that he likes. Uh, you know, Brian Price, Richard Ash. Uh, there's one more one technique I'm not thinking of. Day, Dayton Jones is playing defensive tackle right now. I think I think that is probably what's keeping them from signing somebody right now is position flexibility. Stop me if you've heard that before. Um yeah. so I mean they n- no. Short I could just say no. <laughs> Short answer. See no. No. See si no. or no? No. <laughs> Pretty simple. Okay, Cowboy John is asking, who would be the one to most likely make the 53-man roster out of Charles Stapper, Chaz Green, and Noah Brown? Most likely of those three? Yes. I'm gonna. I'll just keep riding for my guys because I, I love Noah Brown. I think he's going to make it. Yeah, I but, mean, that's a, that's a good group of, of players because um, I could see – I could see no. I, I think Noah Brown is the answer of those three right there. But one of my sneaky hot takes for the get ready for it is I'm not going to be surprised if Chaz Green makes this team, and I'm going to laugh at all the people who are mad about it. But <laughs> I, I we'll wouldn't see. be surprised either. I mean, I just I, we'll nobody see. cares about ma- about making the team as long as you don't really have to play. Oh, at, sure. at a position that's going to hurt the team. If I'm he just plays saying. guard. I think he'll be fine. He's, he's going to be out there at left tackle with no help. Don't do that. Treated like Learn Tyron your Smith. lesson. Lesson learned. He's going to be the eighth and final O lineman onto this team, and everybody's going to lose their minds. But I just I wouldn't be surprised. That's all I'm saying. Now this is a wide shot because uh, we still have a lot to go through. But who would be the one guy as of right now that would be very surprising to you? Someone that you would not imagine making the team and does it that makes the team yeah um like it would really surprise me if this person made the team oh well there i mean there's a lot of guys right now um let's 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 try to answer it differently because you could maybe name 70 guys that come out of nowhere i would say jeff True. heath 5 years ago how about a guy that that would surprise a lot of fans if he made the team, but but don't count this person out. Maybe that. Well, I just uh, I'll, I'm going to cheat a little bit and just say the linebacker depth chart looks very easy to figure out. 
Like it, there is not a lot of room for a Cinderella story because you have three starters in Sean Lee, Damian, or no, Sean Lee, Jalen Smith, and Leighton Vander Esch. Damian Wilson gets you at four. Uh, you brought in Joe Thomas at, to be your kind of backup and special teams guy. He's been starting while Sean Lee does his vet days. Uh, and then maybe you keep seven linebackers, but honestly, six wouldn't surprise me either. So that leaves one spot. You got Chris Covington, who you drafted. Uh, you got Justin March Lillard, who was here last season. Like, there's not a lot of space for a rookie or an. Un- looked good yesterday. Yeah, no, there's there's just not a lot of space at that position for, you know, an undrafted guy or something like that to to do anything. So I'm, that would surprise me. I'm gonna give a name. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Donovan Alumba, cornerback. I like that. Uh, long. He's he's one of the guys that just, you know, he, he fits exactly what the, the prototype is. And they've got a few like that. It's not, he's not the only one. But I, I think he's number 32. Right? Yeah, they need a new 32. They do need a 32. He's a lot taller than the last one. He is a lot taller and uh, longer hair, longer arms. No, he had, a, he had a pick six, I think, last week. Like, he's, he's flashed a couple times. Yeah. All right, well. And, his, and he went to college. Uh, he went to Broadus College. Did he really? Before he like went to Ryan like Broadus' State. College of Scouting. No, or? but there, the college he went to, I forgot what the, I forgot what it's called exactly, but it was like something Broadus. Oh, it's cool. the name of the university he went to. Nope. It's gotta be good, right? Interesting fact. There you go. Okay, thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for listening one more time. Uh, we'll hey, see real you. quick, can what? I just say, if you're listening right now, live, stay tuned because. Uh, hang with the boys is coming up next and they're gonna have a really really special guest well there you have it make sure to tune in to dallascowboys.com radio for nick Eman, david hellman ken garrison and member your csc you guys next week on the break